Garage. My name is Paul, and tonight we're going to get started on a round cribbage set. Now, I don't know how to play cribbage at all, but my mother is a huge fan. Her birthday's coming up this weekend. Uh, tonight is Monday, and I'm actually leaving for camping, hopefully, work permitting, on Thursday. That's why my garage is a mess with camping stuff right now. So, the plan is to make a round cribbage set. I found this template online. I'm not going to post it anywhere because, number one, I don't have a website, and number two, I found it in the first few image results for round cribbage set. So this is very nice because, as you can see, we have a nice center and our poles all set out nice for us uh, and where the holes should go. So I'm not sure what they all mean, but I think this means that you can play with three players. If you guys know how to play cribbage, let me know in the comments if this is helpful. So here's the plan. I'm going to laminate some pieces together. I've got walnut and maple, and I think what I'd like to do is have the outer uh, outer parts be uh, maple on the edges, and then the middle be the walnut. So the way this is going to work is we'll have two uh, pieces with the grain going the same direction, sandwiched together like this. The top portion, because this is only, I believe, three quarters inch thick, will be the playing surface. Underneath will be support, but the center walnut section of the bottom will slide out as a drawer. Because I don't think that with one of these thicknesses that we'll have enough to have a, a play surface and a drawer underneath. That I, I really don't think that's possible. So, that is the plan. Um, tonight, we have to get the lamination going. Because like I said, it's Monday night. I want to leave Thursday. So there's a lot to get done in this short week for me. Um, so, first we have to plan out how wide we want everything to be. Alright, we've got our template here, which comes out to about seven and a quarter inches across and tie in whole. But I'd like to give ourselves a little bit of margin. So I think I'd like to go with a, an overall diameter of eight inches, which will give us a little bit of space on both sides. So, eight inches. So what that means is I think I would like to have... So we've got an eight inch diameter overall. I'd like to go roughly in thirds, but maybe the middle a little bit wider. So we have eight inches, so that could be like two, two, and four. Or it could be like two and a half, two and a half, and three. Let me see. Two and a half, two and a half, and three. I think that, that might sound actually kind of nice. So two and a half on either side. So the middle would be a little bit wider than the edges. I think I like that. Two and a half, two and a half, and three. Quick note, I really don't want to waste any wood, so uh, we know that we have eight inches square on each side, so I went to 17 inches, which is eight times two is 16, plus, plus an extra inch for grace, so I'm going to cut it here, and then I'll have this entire section uh, for another project. First we'll cut our walnut centers down to three inches wide, set the table saw for that. Then we need two strips of two and a half inch wide walnut. So we want to measure out to eight inches, set our combination square to eight inches. Pick from the pretty side, because that's the important part. So here's eight inches from the pretty side here. Here. And here. So I'm gonna mark one, one, and one, two, two, and two, just so that I can keep my sections together. I already have my triangles, but I want to just give myself as many tips as I can down the road. Now that we've got our pieces cut to the rough length and to our definite width, now we can kind of see what we're going to be working with here. So here's the plan. This is the bottom half, and then the top half will go like so. So, we start off by gluing the top half together. So these will be glued together. 
bottom half, we want this to be able to slide out because this center piece is going to be our drawer. But there's a couple of tips here that we want to do. So obviously we want to put some glue on our surfaces. Man, my glue bot's really clogged. Okay, let's smear this along, make sure we have a nice even bead because the whole thing we want it glued especially on the seams or right on the edges. Okay, so we're on our silicone mat here which we know doesn't glue doesn't stick to. We're gonna line these up nicely and use a straight edge here to make sure that they're lined up perfectly. So first we're gonna throw our clamps on there just loosely at first just to kind of get them in place I'm not even really going to tighten them down this guy and then here's the trick so we have our silicone on the bottom that won't that will not uh, be glued and this is just a piece of, of wood that I know is straight that I've uh, taped up with just packing tape they call this a call calling board and so what we're going to use this for is to make sure that the top is straight because if you clamp too tight this way it's going to want to bow one way or the other so what we need to do is clamp this to the tabletop and this is why I went diagonal so that I can clamp to the tabletop diagonally I'm going to go in as tight as I can close to the actual boards that we're clamping. Okay. So what this will do is hold hold these down in a rough plane. Now I'm going to go ahead and snug these up. Really you don't need a ton of clamping pressure. You just need a nudge, a good, you know, a good solid nudge for these things to glue together overnight. Um, but you don't need a ton of pressure. Uh, I'm more more concerned with it being level. I am going to plane it out, like I said. But uh, for now, all I need this is is this. So I am going to go ahead and wipe this up with a damp rag, uh, just because it's a little bit less for the planer to do later. Now we just let this dry overnight. All right, welcome back, night two. Uh, our glue up from last night glued up nicely, so we'll go ahead and take that up. I think first what I want to do is cut this drawer, if you think of this as upside down. I want to cut this drawer piece out to have a back section sitting in there. So I think I'm going to go an inch and a half from the back. Alright, so now you can kind of see how it's coming together. The whole thing's going to be round. We haven't done the round part yet. Here's the top that's going to have all the holes in it. The bottom is going to be uh, the shelf, uh, well, uh, kind of like a shelf, and the drawer that will slide out. So we're going to, next step is we're going to carve all this out, and that's going to come out. So this will, these pieces will be glued underneath the bottom of here, and this will be our drawer that comes out. I think if I start this little drawer at two inches, I can go to seven. The thing is, there's going to be a radius on here. It's going to be fairly tight, so I can't just, like, I don't just have eight whole inches. So I think if I go to six and a half, it should be okay. And then if I come to, let's say about there, that's what, about a quarter inch, quarter inch from the back, and then I've got my boundary here. Again, this is chopped way bigger than the whole radius is gonna be, so most of this is gonna be gone. So I just took my combinate, or my uh, speed square here, did that line, with that line and now I'm going to go ahead and do here which is a quarter inch from the edge all right so now we have this area if you can see that on camera we have this area that needs to be hogged out
so there is a way of doing it. Uh, obviously, these edges are not super nice. Uh, it has been said that the hardest thing to do on a scroll saw is to cut a straight line. But I do have something in mind to correct this, which is something that I have not seen online. So I do not own a spindle sander. It's one of the tools that maybe someday I'd like to get, especially an oscillating one that goes up and down. And I tried it on my drill press with this sanding drum kit set that I found that says that it should work with a drill press. However, the drill press just doesn't move fast enough. Even if you gear it up all the way, it might be kind of fast enough. However, these will fit into a router table beautifully. And they're probably moving way too fast. You just have to be a little bit more careful. So what I do is I take this, these spindle sanders, spindle sanding drum kit, and put it in the router and I am off to the races. You just have to be careful because it doesn't remove, it removes uh, material very, very, very quickly. So that's what I'm going to do in order to try to clean up these edges here. And uh, so we're going to be off to the races. I'm going to have to be very, very careful about it. You know what, instead of having a uh, walnut bottom to a walnut drawer, I could do that. But let's just go ahead and spice it up. I'm going to do it out of walnut and it's going to fit nicely and I'm going to go ahead and cut this out to the same dimensions. quite a few uh, pieces and parts worked down. I think it's time to break out the planer. It takes up a bunch of space, but I think that we're at that point where we need to start working some stuff down. Start working our way towards the final assembly. So I want to run it through against the grain. I'm going to plane down this side a little bit, and then I'm also going to take a little bit off of this side. So this is our top plate, and then uh, we are also going to run these pieces through which are our back pieces. There's still some pretty actually nasty snipe that I'm going to have to kind of work out in the machine later. But uh, we got rid of all that glue and the stickers that were all on top and bottom. It's always, it's going to take another, like a hand sanding to kind of smooth all this out. So then we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with all this stuff. So there's some rollers under there that push this through the cutting blades. But some of these pieces, especially this guy, are gonna be too short. And if the roller hits it, it's just gonna shove it right through. So what, what we wanna do, and what you'll see in a lot of these videos on how to uh, eliminate snipe, is to have pieces in front and back. So what I'm gonna do is put this all on a sled this whole thing can slide underneath there nicely. So this, as far as the, um, as far as the planer is concerned, this is all just one big long piece of wood. So we're gonna try that. Well, that didn't work. Our little bitty piece that was supposed to sit back here got ripped to shreds, so that's not ideal. Well, that is incredibly frustrating. I mean, I can always still cut this piece. I've got the, I've got the stock to do it. It's just irritating when things don't work the way that you want to, but you guys can learn from my mistakes. So, chin up, stiff upper lip. I'm going to step away from the thickness planing stuff for right now. There is still a time consuming piece that we can work on tonight that uh, will still be productive. So, and that is taking our 
kind of flat top piece. Again, my planer decided that it's going to have a ton of snipe. But I thought I figured out. But, 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 but. Not to complain. I'm going to just sand it mostly smooth with the random orbital sander on both sides. And then we're going to double-sided uh, double-sided tape our template to the top and get drilling I think it's a couple hundred holes because I think that each each player has about 120 holes. It's about 360 plus a couple odds and ends, so close to 400 holes that we need to drill. But that's just nice, simple, therapeutic. We know what we're doing. No curveballs. That's what we're gonna do next. This is now much flatter. You can. See, obviously, there's still some bulges here because the snipe was just obnoxious on both sides. So that's going to take some major sanding later on down the road in order to get rid of that. And we can do that. But I think we're okay to start. Uh, I'm going to double side tape this to the top, center it, and, um, and then I can start drilling some holes. That's the most time consuming part of this whole entire process. And I want to get it done because we're running short on time. We only have uh, tonight and tomorrow night. Tonight is Tuesday, tomorrow night is Wednesday night, and Thursday hopefully I'm driving up the hill and delivering it. So we have tonight to drill holes and maybe get some glue things done. We'll see. Uh, and then tomorrow night is only glue time and finish time. So we're under the gun here. I really would like to get this done to give it to my mother. So, uh, anyway, double sided tape. Uh, we'll find the center, then double sided tape, and then uh, keep going. I decided to go ahead and pre-punch all of the holes of these 367 holes uh, with a little awl and a hammer um, just to give the drill bit a little bit better guidance just so I'm not relying on the exact precision. I'm going to keep going as long as I can. It's already after midnight. It's almost about 20 minutes to 1 right now. I'll go as far as I can tonight. I do have to work again in the morning. Drove about five hours today. Keep on trucking. Hopefully we can hit our deadline. Set my plunge depth to a little bit more than halfway through the material here. Hey everyone, so after I finished editing this whole entire project video down, it wound up being about an hour and a half long and that was cutting out everything that wasn't important. So rather than making you sit through a feature film length video, I decided to break it up into segments. So you'll see a playlist over on the side and uh, go ahead and watch through the whole series if you'd like. Leave some comments, let me know what you would think you would do differently at each step because again this whole uh, channel is all about me trying to learn from my mistakes and hopefully you learn from my mistakes as well. So we'll see you guys in the next video.